it was a dumb play going out into that storm. But sometimes you got no choice. Sometimes you just got to go. And sometimes the dumb play is just the one that gets you what you need. The rain was raining down like a rainy night in Georgia, which was lucky, given that we were in Georgia and, well, it was raining down like a rainy night in Georgia. I turned up the collar of my Colombo Macintosh and pulled my hat down around my ears and pulled my socks up, right up. There was no time to waste. I jumped into my car and the footwell was full of water. God damn that leaking sunroof. But hey, I'm a gumshoe. So wet feet is my natural state of being. The car roared into life at the 23rd attempt. God damn that dodgy battery. I spun gravel as I fishtailed off into the night, barely able to see for the dark and the rain. God damn those busted lights and that missing windshield wiper. But I knew instinctively exactly where I was headed, even in this foul, fearful weather. Drifting the car sideways, I slid into the gas station. God damn those tires are tired. And pulled up hard against the front of the dingy convenience store kiosk. God damn, those brakes sure need a bleed. The man behind the counter looked startled as I entered. The bell jangling intrusively at my intrusive intrusion. Unshaven and with shifty eyes, boy, I must have looked quite a sight. With hat pulled low over my ears and socks pulled high over my knees. I needed answers and I needed them fast. Seeing nothing, I surveyed the scene. Well, I had been a quantity surveyor in a previous story, but hey, that's a previous story for another day. I checked every nook and cranny for what I was looking for, but not a trace, nothing, nada, knackle, nil, nout, no go, nary a sign, nothing doing. Oh, but they were there all right. I just knew it. I could feel it in my churning guts, but where? I approached the counter and eyeballed the weasley looking dude standing on the other side. He looked nervous, scared, evasive even, as he nervously shifted from foot to evasive foot. I was getting desperate, and he could sense my desperation. He could smell it in the air. Oh, sorry about that, I said, wafting the back of my Mac to dispel any lingering uh, doubts. I do beg your pardon, I pardoned. But I'm a desperate man, and I'll stop at nothing to get what I want. I reached over the counter and grabbed him by the lapels, pulling him in close, real close, so he could taste my breath. Damn, I really should see the dentist. With wild staring eyes and a foul low growl, I demanded to know where those I seek were hiding. He spluttered back a pain right sob, whether from the tightness of my grip or the vileness of my breath. I knew not, nor cared not. He looked away, refusing to meet my gaze. Again, it could have been my breath. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Sure you do, I said, shaking him vigorously by the lapels. It's the middle of the night, in the middle of a lockdown, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a foul and fearful storm. I've had no sleep, no fresh fruit and vegetables for a week, and I'm a desperate man. I'm dressed in just a bad hat, a Colombo Macintosh, 
and a pair of socks pulled up ridiculously high. I'm wound up, bound up, and ready to explode. You know exactly what I'm after, and I ain't leaving here empty-handed. So you tell me where they are right now, or you may not see the light of dawn again. Dawn. That is your wife's name, right? He looked into my eyes, and I knew he knew what I was looking for. And he knew that I knew that he knew what I was looking for. And he knew it. Oh, please, sir. Don't hurt me. I just work here. Don't lie to me, fool, I said. I know you own this place. This is your joint. I snatched the aromatic reefer off the counter and waved it knowingly in his face. Now, where are they? I demanded menacingly, pocketing the reefer. For evidence, of course. Okay. Okay, he said. They're out back. He indicated tamely with his thumb. Well, let's go get them then, shall we? I said, moving awkwardly around behind the counter, still holding his lapels in a Vulcan death grip. And no funny business, you understand? <laughs> he said. Fat chance of that in this story, he muttered under his breath. Now open up that door, I said, sticking my foot out and shaking it all about, indicating the back door. Hokey cokey, mister, he said, unlocking the door. No, I said, it's not the goddamn hokey cokey, you fool. I was just pointing with my foot because my hands are full. I threw him to one side and kicked open the door. And there they were, hidden in the dark. Masses and masses and masses of them. More than I had ever seen crammed into such a small space before. <laughs> oh! Thank Christ I found you at last, I shouted, almost laughing with hysteria as I grabbed three maxi packs off the top of the pile. Tell me, tell me what's the goddamn chances of running out of goddamn toilet paper on a goddamn COVID night like this, huh?